Hey man, how many credits do you have? Is a very common question you get in the roller coaster enthusiast community. Some enthusiasts have the ever elusive goal to inflate their coaster credit list as much as possible, which is why you might see a grown adult riding something like this all by themselves. But what is a coaster credit and what counts as one? Now wait, let's back up a second. If you are unfamiliar with roller coaster enthusiast jargon, then you may be asking yourself, what even is a roller coaster credit? In this crash course video, I will be covering exactly what classifies a roller coaster as one and what a coaster credit is. A person gains a roller coaster credit when they experience a new roller coaster for the first time. A credit is essentially the amount of different roller coasters a person has ridden. So if I say I have 10 credits, then I've ridden 10 different roller coasters. So then what is a roller coaster and how do you know how to determine if a ride is a coaster or not? If you look up the definition, you'll get something formal like what's on screen, but we're not dealing with that today. Other than some long-winded definition, just remember that a roller coaster consists of these two major things. First, a train or cars that traverse a track, and second, sole reliance on gravity at some point. This can be achieved via a lift hill or a launch, for example, no matter how big or small the coaster is. Seems simple enough, right? Well, there are nuances, however, so let's practice a few. Is this drop tower a roller coaster? No. It relies on gravity, but it doesn't have a vehicle traversing a track. How about this hush giant frisbee ride? Nope. Again, it has the gravity factor, but no track. So this is considered a flat ride. How about this intimate impulse ride? Yes, it is. It has a train on a track and solely relies on gravity at some point. A coaster does not have to be a full circuit for it to be counted. What about Pipe Scream at Cedar Point? Now this one's a bit fuzzy because it has a car on a track, but it utilizes a controlled motor throughout, not relying enough on gravity. Despite Cedar Point calling this a coaster, no other park that has one of these rides does. And the coaster community largely considers this model not to be a coaster. What about log flumes? Usually no, but it depends on the log flume. If it only uses water running through a trough, then it's not a coaster because this technically doesn't count as a track, even with the drop. However, some log flumes and water rides have small sections where they do connect to a track and go down a dip using solely gravity. If the ride does this, then technically it is a roller coaster. What about bobsled rides? Yes. These are bobsled coasters, and although unconditional, they rely on gravity and they have vehicles that run on a track. Mountain coasters also count as credits since they use gravity and also have vehicles running on a track. There are some gray areas, however, and many enthusiasts have to use their own judgment to determine whether a ride is one credit or two. Let's take a look at cloned rides, for example. There are 12 Batman clones, or the exact same ride at different parks. Seven of them are at Six Flags parks. Are all of these just one credit, or 12 of them? As crazy as it may sound, it's 12. As far as the majority of coaster enthusiasts are concerned, each clone is a separate credit. If you've ridden all 12 of the Batman clones, then you've got yourself 12 credits. Now what about a Mobius coaster? So something like Twisted Colossus, where there are two tracks, such as a racing coaster. You start on one side in the station and then you end up on the other side when you get off the ride. In my opinion, and largely in agreement with others in the community, this only counts as one credit. Now, moving on, what about racing coasters? Are these one or two credits? The answer is that it depends. This one is highly debated. Some enthusiasts count racing roller coasters with two sides as two credits. In my opinion, if the racing coaster is identical or just very closely mirrored, it's only one credit. This is because the ride experience is almost exactly the same, with the only change being laterals experienced on the opposite side. However, if there are two sides designed significantly different, you know, one example of this is Dueling Dragons at Universal, though it no longer exists, then this counts as two separate credits. Now, what about if a roller coaster is relocated to a different park? Boomerang, for example, used to be at Six Flags Over Texas, but was moved to Six Flags St. Louis in 2013. If you wrote it at each park, does it count as one or two? This one is also up for debate. I personally do not count relocations as new credits, but I can understand those who would count it as separate. If the coaster stays in the same plot, but simply gets rethemed or repainted or the landscaping changed around it, is it a new credit? No way. Most don't count this as a new credit, and that would be quite a stretch if you did. 
However, a major change to the ride that vastly changes the ride experience, in my opinion, would count as a new credit. So some examples of this are RMC conversions. So for example, Mean Streak being converted into Steel Vengeance. Obviously those are two very different rides and each of them are their own credit. Both were built by different manufacturers too. Although I would apply this to new styles of trains too that vastly affect ride experience. One example of this is Mantis at Cedar Point. It used to have stand-up trains, but recently was converted to floorless sit-down trains. The bottom line is, if you do not know if a ride is a roller coaster, the easiest way to tell is to go to RCDB, or the Roller Coaster Database, and check to see if it is officially recognized as a coaster by the website. The link to RCDB will be in the description. In all, counting roller coaster credits is for enjoyment, so that's what matters the most. And obviously, if you're to the point where you're counting how many roller coasters you've ridden, you're definitely an enthusiast and you love roller coasters. So even if classifications are a bit different, there's no worry. I hope you go out and get many new credits with this newfound knowledge. Comment down below if you classify coasters any differently than what I mentioned in this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar coaster content coming soon. I'll be releasing two videos each week, so make sure to subscribe for more. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.